Hello, this is Robert with Brave Defender Training Group. What I want to take a couple minutes today and talk to you about is a critically important skill for law enforcement officers to have. And that is how to apply a tourniquet safely on yourself if you find yourself injured while you're in performance of your duties. We know this is important because based on the injuries that you may have, an arterial bleed can bleed out in as little as 90 seconds to up to three minutes. So it happens very, very fast. And that's why it's important for officers to understand how to apply medicine on themselves. Because if we look at most of the data that's out there from the various reports on assaults on law enforcement officers, we know that the majority of officers get injured when they're either by themselves or maybe only with a single partner. So being able to treat yourself during a tactical operation is critically important for officers to be able to do. Now the tourniquet is the primary recommended form of bleeding control for controlling any form of life-threatening arterial bleeding from your extremities, such as your arms and your legs. We know that it's extremely effective and it's extremely fast to apply. So that's why we wanna go straight to that if the scenario allows. Now, some of you may have heard that we only apply tourniquets as an absolute last resort, because if we apply a tourniquet, then the patient may end up losing their limb. Guys, this is just false. That's not the science. We know now, based on current medical science, that tourniquets can be safely applied and left in place for multiple hours, between six to eight hours without any negative adverse effects or tissue damage. So it's an extremely safe and effective method of bleeding control. And that's why it's gonna be our primary method that we're gonna utilize if we have any arterial bleeding coming from our extremities. Now I encourage all officers, if you're gonna end up purchasing your own tourniquet, please make sure that the tourniquet that you purchase and carry is one that has been proven and tested. The Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care has a list of recommended tourniquets that they have tested and have been proven to work both in laboratory as well as real world application. So I encourage all officers to make sure that your tourniquet is one off of that list. That way you know it's gonna work when you need it to. Regardless of the type of tourniquet that you're carrying, make sure that in however you are carrying it, that that tourniquet is gonna be accessible by both hands. We don't get to choose the time and the place of our injuries. And so we want to make sure that we can access that tourniquet regardless of which arm we have been injured in from a variety of positions. So this may mean that you need to get out and do a little bit of experimenting with your equipment to find what is going to work best for you. Let's talk about the different components that make up a tourniquet. Now, every tourniquet that's out there is going to function fundamentally the same. However, there's going to be slight differences between, between each individual brand and model. So for today's demonstration, the tourniquet that we're using is the soft tourniquet manufactured by Tactical Medical Solutions. This is one of the most common tourniquets that is found in American law enforcement today. And all of the other tourniquets that are on that recommended and approved list are going to function very similar to this tourniquet right here. Now, every tourniquet is going to have several common features. Starting off with, we have what we call the circumferential band. This is the part of the tourniquet that is actually gonna be going around the limb and constricting that limb and applying the pressure. You need to make sure that the circumferential band is at a bare minimum one inch wide. Anything less than that is just not gonna be able to compress that artery in the way that we want it to. Every tourniquet is gonna have some sort of buckle device that allows the circumferential band to pass through it. Now, different tourniquets have some different variations in their buckles, so please make sure that you're familiar with your tourniquet and the buckle device that is utilized on it. Also, every tourniquet is gonna have some form of either windlass or ratcheting device that we're gonna be utilizing to apply the final pressure and constrict the bleeding. Every tourniquet is also going to have some sort of device for securing or locking that windlass or ratchet in place. In the case of the soft tourniquet, as well as the combat action tourniquet, that is one of the other most common tourniquets found, they both contain this windlass retention clip that we're able to secure the windlass inside of and lock it in place. Now, a feature that is unique to the soft tourniquet that we're using here today is it has this windlass locking clip that I can apply over the top of that windlass to secure it in place once it is inside the clip, preventing it from coming loose. 
Now again, every tourniquet is gonna have slight variances, but they're all going to function fundamentally the same way. Now when I apply this tourniquet, there's a couple of principles that I need to keep in mind. First, I wanna try and always apply my tourniquet behind some form of cover or concealment if I'm able to do so. I wanna try and avoid conducting medicine out in the open where I may be exposed to hostile fire. I always wanna to get to a more advantageous position if the scenario allows it. Also, when I apply this tourniquet, because I'm probably applying this on myself in the middle of a tactical scenario, I need to get it on in the most rapid and expedient manner. So that means I'm gonna be applying the tourniquet over the top of my clothing. I'm also going to be applying the tourniquet as high as I can get it onto the affected limb, making sure that I don't go over any joints. Now, some of you may have heard that we apply a tourniquet only two to three inches above the wound. This is what we call a deliberate tourniquet technique. It is more suited for controlled environments. In a direct threat care environment where I'm having to apply this on myself, I need to get it on very rapidly. So we are gonna be doing what is called a hasty tourniquet. A hasty tourniquet is gonna be where I apply it over the clothing and as high as possible. It's gonna be the most effective way for me to apply the tourniquet and constrict the uh, bleeding. Another principle, once that tourniquet is in place, I'm gonna to continue to tighten the windlass until the bleeding is effectively stopped. Now this may cause pain to either myself or if I'm applying it on another individual, that's not an indication of incorrect application. In fact, being correctly applied is extremely painful. So don't use that as an indicator of incorrect application. Now let's talk about how I would apply this on myself if I had an injury to an upper extremity. So for the scenario that we're gonna be talking about today, we're gonna to go ahead and simulate that I've suffered some sort of uh, injury to my support side arm or my left arm, rendering it inoperable. So I want to go ahead and retrieve my tourniquet from its carry position and open it up. Now, when I open it up, I'm exposing the circumferential band and I'm just gonna simply slide that loop over the limb, getting it as high as I can possibly get it onto the limb, but making sure that I'm not going up over that joint. Now you'll notice as I apply the tourniquet, I'm trying to keep the circumferential band orientated where it's pointing across my body. This is just gonna give me a whole, whole lot more force and control when I pull across my body versus trying to pull away. So if I'm able to do so, that's how I wanna get that tourniquet orientated. Once it's on and correctly uh, applied to the limb, I'm gonna grab that circumferential band and I'm gonna begin pulling it, working it across my body, getting that tourniquet nice and tight against the limb. Once I have that tourniquet tight, I can now come up to the windlass, take my windlass and begin turning it. And it doesn't matter which direction. And I'm just gonna continue turning that windlass until the bleeding stops. Once I have the windlass correctly tightened, I can now go ahead and secure it into the windlass retention clip, locking it in place. Now my tourniquet is correctly applied and should be working effectively. But I'm a little worried about during movement, this windlass coming loose. So what I can do on the soft tourniquet is take that triangular locking clip and just simply bring that up and put it over the end of the windlass, securing it and locking it in place. That will help hold that windlass into that clip so I don't have to worry about it coming loose during any movements or extractions. But what if I've suffered an injury on my lower extremity? How am I gonna handle that? So for this example, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna simulate that I have been injured in my right leg and I'm gonna to need to apply a tourniquet to that. Applying the tourniquet is gonna to be fundamentally the same with just a few extra differences when we talk about lower extremities like the legs. Obviously, I've made sure I've gotten behind some form of cover so that I'm not exposed. Now, this is a more serious injury because the femoral artery that runs through the leg is much, much larger than the artery that's located in the arms. So this is going to be where I bleed out a whole lot faster. So it's imperative that I get this tourniquet on in the most rapid and efficient manner possible. Now, an extra step that I need to do when I'm applying a tourniquet, especially on lower extremities, is very quickly I wanna do a pocket sweep and just make sure that there's nothing in the pockets that's gonna obstruct that tourniquet from being able to get around that limb. This might also mean that I have to maneuver a holster or a piece of equipment out of the way as well in order to make sure that I'm getting that tourniquet nice and tight against the limb. Now I can go ahead and retrieve my tourniquet from my carry position. 
Now, when I open this tourniquet up, depending on your flexibility, the amount of equipment you're using and the injury that you've sustained, you might be able to get this tourniquet on over your leg. However, you might not be able to do so. So what you may end up having to do is opening this tourniquet up to wrap it around your leg. If you're using a tourniquet such as the combat action tourniquet or the cat tourniquet, this means you're going to need to unthread the circumferential band from the buckle. In the case of the soft tourniquet that we're using here today, this buckle is designed with a quick breakaway so that I can just quickly open it up, wrap it around my leg. I wanna get it as high as I can possibly get it onto my limb without getting up into that hip or groin area, and then simply clip that buckle back in place. Now you'll notice, again, I have that circumferential band orientated where I'm pulling across my body because I'm just gonna get more force and control that way. So once I've locked that clip in place, I can go ahead and take my circumferential band, give it a good solid pull, get it as tight as I can. Now I can go to the windlass and begin turning that windlass, tightening that tourniquet. And I'm gonna continue tightening that tourniquet until the bleeding begins to stop. And I'll go ahead and secure that into the windlass retention clip and then lock it in place with the windlass locking clip as I did before. Now, an important note when it comes to leg injuries. Again, because of the large diameter of the femoral artery and the large muscles that are protecting it, a single tourniquet is most likely not going to be enough to stop that bleeding. So if I've applied a tourniquet and there's still bleeding coming out, that doesn't necessarily mean that this first tourniquet was incorrectly applied. What it more than likely means is I'm going to need to apply a second tourniquet in order to finish controlling that bleeding. So if that's the case, I'm going to take a second tourniquet, apply it, and I'm going to get it as close as possible to that first tourniquet without going up over the top of it. I don't want the two tourniquets on top of each other. I just want to butt those two tourniquets up that extra width is gonna be able to give me that force to constrict that artery down and stop that bleeding. All right, everybody, hopefully you gained something out of this video that gives you an idea of some additional training that you need to go out and do with yourself in order to keep yourself alive if you get injured. There's no way from watching a single video that you're gonna be able to gain proficiency in such a critical skill. So I encourage all of you to get out and get into a hands-on tactical medical class where you can learn how to apply a tourniquet with good solid repetitions, focusing on self-aid and self-treatment. As always, if there's anything that we can do for you, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you for your time and continue to be safe.